Zechariah chapter 4. We are in an interesting book. The angel. Now, the angel, we've seen Zechariah from the beginning. It's this angel that popped up. But if you remember correctly, get where I'm at. I'm looking for a place here. Look at chapter 3, verse number 6. We've been having the angel of the Lord. And please bear with me, my eyes are not that well a couple days. So this could be the angel that showed up with Zachariah earlier, or this still could be Jesus. Because it's interesting, because we're going to go into talking about the tribulation period. And if it's the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to show us prophecy that he showed John, the apostle. Or again, it could be just an ordinary angel. If I remember correctly, I don't think we see anywhere in this chapter where we'll see the angel of the Lord. But it says, and the angel, so the and picks up from chapter 3, and that angel of chapter 3 is Jesus. And the angel talked with me, I mean, the angel talked with me, came again, okay, and waked me. As a man that waketh out of sleep. Zachariah fell asleep. <laughs> what? How could you fall asleep through all this? And yet there's been places in the Bible where the prophets, they either fall to the ground, they fall asleep. Listen, I heard one guy, he, he professed to be a Christian, I'm not going to challenge it, but you know, I'm going to go up to heaven. I'm going to go my man and Jesus and give him a high five. No, you're not. I believe if we were, if the rapture is delayed to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, we're going to see on our knees the feet of Jesus first. And said unto me, What seest thou? And that seems to be the theme. Of Zechariah, and that's the theme of the regular angels. Because we're not talking about Joshua the high priest no longer. And previously, Zechariah, this regular angel, if I can say that, what sees that? What sees that? And I said, I have looked. And behold, a candlestick all of gold. Now, this is the candlestick that was light or representation of the one that's in the temple. I don't know. If this angel is the Lord Jesus Christ, if, and he's going to talk about the tribulation, and we are, like he did with, with John, Revelation 1. I like Revelation, but I don't like the Old Testament book. Uh, um, you got a problem. Because why are we going to Revelation? Now, I did not see this earlier, so I'm looking through Revelation 1 here. I know it's here. Look at Revelation 1.12. And I turned and see the voice that spake to me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Pay attention to that seven. Now, there are seven golden candlesticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. In the midst of the seven golden candlesticks was like unto the Son of Man, Jesus. And that's what Jesus looks like. We can get that. Verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, 
are the, and the seven golden candlesticks. If these go together with Zechariah, if, 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 the seven stars of the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks, which are saw is the seven churches. There is no church in Zechariah. Okay? But you run the two books together. <laughs> Here is one candlestick of gold, not seven. With a bowl upon the top of it. And that bowl was where you would set the olive oil. And the wick. It would hold the olive oil and the wick to light it. And seven lamps thereon. Revelation said seven candlesticks. Here is one candlestick with seven branches. That's the one described in the temple. Seven pipes to the seven lamps. That's the, a column. Which are upon the top thereof. The two olive trees by it. One upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So here is this candlestick, and here is an olive tree, and an olive tree. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, What are these, my lord, small l? This is the conversation he's had with a regular angel, if I can say regular angel. Because angels are not regular. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, and he always says this, knowest thou not what these be? I would not have asked the question. And the thing is, would be that Paul said, we would not want you to be ignorant. Maybe Zacharias should have known. You know, when Nicodemus is asked about being born again, and he goes, well, am I supposed to go back to my mother's womb? Well, that's a very good question. Jesus says, art thou not, uh, I forget what he called, I forget what Nicodemus was. I mean, aren't you somebody of this show? Aren't you the one in charge? Aren't you supposed to, you're supposed to know what I just said. And then you can run that New birth, I believe it's Isaiah. I said, No, my Lord, small L. Then answered and spake to me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. That's the one that went back, headed back to bring everybody with Nehemiah. I mean, Ezra, to Judah. Not by might, not your muscles, not your tanks, not your Uzis, not your swords, nor by power. Don't go lift weights. Don't stretch yourself. Don't flex the muscles. But by my spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, save the Lord of hosts, everything at all. So what God is pronouncing, everything he's doing is done, is done by the Spirit. Now the Baptist are afraid of the Holy Spirit. To the fact with the charismatic, to the charismatics, you know, the Holy Spirit does everything. And they praise the Holy Spirit. And, and Jesus said, we're not, the Holy Spirit's not there for praise and honor. But He is. The charismatics give the Holy Spirit too much, and the Baptists give Him not enough. And we must not forget that God created everything. Jesus created everything. 
and the Spirit. And that when we read Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning God, Genesis 1, 2, the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. And then verse 3 and 4, and God said, there's Jesus. Who art thou, O great mountain? It's amazing how God addresses mountains and all that. Before it's irreparable, thou shalt become a plain. This is going into the millennium. The earth is going to have a great change in the tribulation period. There's going to be earthquakes. And, and when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, the Bible speaks about Mount of Olives is going to split in half. Jesus told the disciples, you got faith as a mustard seed. You can say to that mountain, be gone and be cast into the sea. Do you ever think about when, when we come back and it's going to be the apostles there? Imagine Jesus looking to one of his apostles. Do it. And one of the apostles, maybe Peter with the mountain. Hey, mountain, go into the sea. Kaboink. Because he's going to have the faith then. Anything about that? Before the rubble, thou shalt be made a plain. A mountain is going to change into a plain, a flat. He shall bring forth the headstone. Run that back to chapter 3 about that stone. The headstone, the cornerstone, Jesus said that's him. The capstone. And that headstone, that, that capstone and the cornerstone, the only way, the only block, if I can say block, that that could be is on top of a pyramid. Which our U.S. dollar bill on the back of it is missing. And they put the all-seeing eye of God and not Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to get into all that. Therefore, with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. That's, that's, that's the millennium. God's great. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. That's the temple. Now watch. His hand shall also finish it. The, the date and the time of Zerubbabel, it's not finished yet. We're in the middle of Ezra. Because at the end of Ezra, the temple's built, they're glorifying it, and, they're, and they got the, the, the sacrifices, they're reading the word of God, and they're, I think it was, it was raining. So we're dating Zechariah in the midst, in the middle of Ezra. Because the temple's not finished yet. But they're building it. Thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Zechariah? The angel of the Lord. Who's the me? And it's funny because we are in a day and age today, you can't use pr pronouns. So they don't want you to use pronouns. They don't want you to say he or she. And in the, the, the realm of the Baptist scholars who don't know nothing, they don't, you know, these and thou. We don't want them letters. We don't want those words. We don't want the icaric words. Okay, so I don't know who that me is. I'm a, am I allowed to say I don't know? Because I don't want you to put on hip waders and have me feed you cow manure. If that's my opinion. My opinion is cow manure. I'm going to tell you I don't know. For who has despised the day of small things? 
For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. Oh, thank you very much now, Lord. Seven what? They are the eyes of the Lord. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back to chapter 3. Now we're going to do a lot of scripture looking here. Chapter 3, verse 9. I said, please forgive my eyes. And behold, the stone. Did we just read the stone? Did we just read something about I think we just read something about the stone. Okay. The headstone. Behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. I think we read that. Upon one stone there shall be seven eyes, and the gravings thereof, up and by the Lord. And I said that God did that with the Ten Commandments. We're not talking about the tablets today, but that's what God did. All right, so go back to chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 7, there's the headstone. Verse 9, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the house. God said he's going to lay that stone before Joshua. His hands have also finished it. They shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. I, I'm going to assume, and I don't want to make an ass out of you and me, but I'm going to assume that this angel is still Jesus Christ. For who has despised the day of small things? It has to do something with the temple and the building. For they shall rejoice, and they do in Ezra, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel, with those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, there's that, that stone in chapter 3, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. And if you were to run to chapter 3, verse 9, behold the stone, and that's the seven eyes. Proverbs, going to Proverbs. Why are we going to Proverbs? Who built the first temple? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Proverbs 15, 3. This is not the first, but this is one of the, the first Bible verses I ever learned by heart. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding evil and the good. Okay. Revelation, your favorite great book, chapter 5. There are people, oh, I love Revelation, I love, and they don't know anything about the book of Zechariah and Haggai. How often have we go into the book of Revelation? Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Are you ready? Hold your spiritual pants in your chair. Hold them. And this don't make you pee your, your, your spiritual pants. And I beheld, and lo, the midst of the throne of the four beasts, they cry, holy, holy, holy. And the midst of the elders, that's the four, twenty-four elders, we don't know who they are, stood a lamb, capital L, Jesus, as it had been slain, are you ready? The lamb, Jesus, having seven horns, seven eyes, oh boy. And he's the rock of Israel where the water came from. And the Bible in Psalms describes that rock as the flint rock. You don't get water out of a flint rock. Do you have a lighter? Do you go get your lighter going? That lighter uses flint. Flint, when you strike flint, makes a spark. It don't make water. But God took a flint and God made water for the altar of Elijah. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Which are the seven spirits. A lot of people say run to Isaiah, and you can, it's good. So the Lamb, 
that has been slain upon Calvary. Now, not literal, but has seven eyes and seven horns. Zechariah. Isn't this good? Isn't it interesting? Scripture with Scripture, and I'm going to say it again. Don't mess with the words. Do you hear me? Because if you mess with the words like the modern Bibles do, you're not going to get the cross-references. And the, and the people that try to get more information, try to find out things, they don't even get what I'm telling you right now with the Scriptures. They will tell you that this is all about Zerubbabel and has nothing to do, they cannot find the tribulation passages I'm going to tell you right now, including the two olive tree. They don't mention it. They don't know because they messed with the word of God. Which run to and throw through the whole earth. Then answered I, okay, Zachariah, what are these two olive trees? on the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side of the candlestick. And we go back up here and it says in verse 3, two olive trees. So I'm sure Zachariah got what was already said about the rock. He moves to the next one. I don't know all about the rock that I just read about. I know they used to have the pet rock when I grew up as a child. They got a little rock that came in a box. They made a fortune off that. I remember when I went to summer camp for Boy Scout, Boy Scouts. They had a guy there, you know, he had the weather rock, and he would pick the rock up, and tell what the weather's going to be. You know. and it's funny, because one troop took the rock and hit it. And the guy cried. There are people, wherever they go, they gotta, they got to get a rock. They went to the beach, they got to get a rock. And there are places you go, souvenir, and you can buy a rock. And they supposedly, I don't know, Went to the moon, I don't believe. They suppose he brought back rocks. And they completely deny and reject the rock of Jesus Christ. Alright, so here we go. Next one. We having fun? And I answered again. And said unto him. He said, then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive trees? He had to repeat himself. Now this time, it's olive branches and not olive trees. And if you were to go to Google Images, Show me the the, the, the the icon, or you know, how about this? Put two olive branches in your image search of Google, or whatever one you use, and the United Nations will show up. And the United Nations, every one of those two little flowery things, are two olive branches with the world right in the middle. So the United Nations is saying that what we're reading right now is them. That they are bringing peace. They haven't brought peace at all. The entire world, I forget what I read, and it is wrapped in the peaceful sign of Yah. The olive in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit of God. The olive oil, which anointed kings and high priests 
And Christ himself, the word Christ means anointed. And that anointing would be olive oil. I'm sorry, United Nuts, you missed it. We're going to show you what the Bible says. And you know what? Many Baptists will not believe what I'm going to tell you. Most of your scholars will reject what I'm going to tell you. You go to Bible college, you go to Bible institute, you go to Bible whatever, they're going to completely tell you that I am nuts. And it will probably follow it by, you're a rough tonight. I've had that honor called by a Baptist preacher that I'm a Ruckman. I went to a satellite Ruckman Institute, but not a Peter S. Pensacola Bible Institute. So officially, I'm not a Ruckmanite, and whatever a Ruckmanite is. I'm leaving the Baptist name and calling myself a separatist. That speaks more to what my belief of the Bible. So, two olive branches which threw the two golden pipes, empty the golden oil, that's olive oil, out of themselves. So there is an olive tree, extra information, of those olive trees there is two olive branches that are through the pipes of the golden candlesticks that are offering their oil for the light. You don't find that in the picture of the United Nations. So the oil for the candlestick is actually coming from, which doesn't happen, the olive tree, but you know, it comes from the berries. You were to crush those berries. And to show you how the world is separate from Christians, or the Christians should be separated from the world, and the church is to be chased, the very fact is if you go into a grocery store and you buy olive oil, there's actually a classification virgin olive oil. Huh, of all names to choose. No one's laid their hands. No one has outfitted themselves with the oil. Too bad the church is not like that. The church today would be a branch of poison ivy. And he answered and said to me, Knowest not thou what these beings said, No, my Lord. Yeah, you don't know what it is? Then he said, last verse. And this is loaded. These are the two anointed, the oil, the olive oil. As all the kings were anointed with olive oil. All the high priests from Aaron were anointed with olive oil. These are the two anointed ones. They are called into service, ordained by God. And there's two of them that stand by the Lord of the whore. Now get that. Remember that. That stand by the Lord of the whore. We're going to see that in a moment. I'm going to show you the two anointed ones. Let me tell you who they're, first of all, one of them is not Enoch, as some will say. Because they will say Enoch was raptured and, you know, he's going to come back and what I'm going to tell you is he needs to die. Well, the church is not going to go rapture. Those who have done, not died that get raptured and caught up with those who have died, you're not coming back to the earth, Joel chapter 2, to die. Though if you get stabbed, 
ain't going to do you no good because you're not going to die. You ain't going to feel it. What was it the other day? I, I know this is off on the road. What did I hear the other day? They, there was some, some, I'm like, oh, I can't believe they believe that. But All right, so, are you ready? Revelation 11, verse 3. Verse 1 and 2 is about the temple. What is Zechariah about? I will give power. You need to say not by night, not by power. Don't mess with the words in the King James Bible. I will give power to my two witnesses. In Zechariah, they are called the two anointed ones. They are also called witnesses. Don't you dare say Jehovah Witnesses. They shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. I think that's three and a half years. Clothed in sackcloth. Ouch. That's rough. These, here we go, here we go. Don't mess with the words of the King James Bible. You got it? These are the two olive trees. What two olive trees? Where did you read about two olive trees? There are people, I love Revelation, I love Revelation. And don't read, these are the two olive trees, not even knowing which, what we just read in Zechariah. And the two candlesticks. That's quite odd because Zechariah said one. Revelation 1 said seven. They are the anointed ones. They are the witnesses. They are the olive trees. And they are also the candlesticks. Standing before the God of the earth. Remember I told you? The Lord of the whore. They stand by the Lord of the whore. But we'll read about that in a moment. If any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth. That's cool. Do you know two men in the Bible are associated with fire? One walked up to a bush that burned that was not consumed. Another one built an altar before the Baal worshippers watered that altar with buckets and bales of water and fire came down from heaven. Fire is going to come out of their mouth and devour their enemies. If any man will hurt them, he must, in this manner, be killed. Don't mess with these two men. Well, I'll give you their names in a moment. These have power to shut heaven. That it rain not in the days of their prophet. Do you know a prophet that said, okay, God, no more rain. Do you know a prophet that said, okay, God, let it rain. All right, you know that prophet? And have power over the waters to turn them to blood. Do you know a prophet that took his rod and a river turned to blood three times? He said, what do you mean three times? When he was speaking to God at the burning bush, God said, take your rod, take your water, look, blood. Now, when you go talk to Israel, take the water and turn it to blood. When you go before Pharaoh, turn the river into blood. 
and smite the earth with all plagues. Do you know a prophet that had a whole bunch of plagues reference to him? As often as, that's why I tell you, Book of Exodus is happening again. The frogs are coming back. The lights are coming. I mean, I get this picture of these two. Watch this. No rain. Oh. Watch this. Lord brings and flies. Whoa. All right. How about some darkness? Hey. As they will. And when they have finished their testimony, some testimony, the beast, the Antichrist, that ascended out of the bottomless pit, L, shall make war against them. Oh, there's a war coming. And shall overcome them and kill them. One of them died and didn't get in the promised land. He's there now. Right now where we are. He's in Israel. Another one never died, and he's coming back to life to die. One dies twice, a prophet likened unto me, and one is raptured, and then he dies. Their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city. Here we go. This is Jerusalem. Are you ready for the holy city, Mr. Baptist? We went to the holy city. I mentioned this the other night. Which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. That's your holy city. No wonder you call it holy city. Because it matches your livelihood in your church. Sodomites are praying around in Jerusalem today. Where also our Lord, capital L, was crucified, definitely in Jerusalem. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half. They're not even going to bury those bodies. At least they buried Jesus. Moses was buried. And then Michael showed up, and the devil showed up. <laughs> wait, wait, uh, hey, the Lord rebuked thee, Satan. Remember that? We read that the other day. The Lord rebuked thee. We read. I don't like the Old Testament books. Why not? All right, so they, they disputed over the dead body of Moses. The devil, again, is <laughs> the, the body of Moses. He kills Moses. But I'll give you his name later. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them, the dead anointed ones, the dead witnesses, the dead candlesticks. God's people. They're happy. And make Merry Christmas. Don't mess with the words in the King James Bible. There's your Merry Christmas. How do you know? And shall send gifts one to another. That's your Christmas. That's where we're going to give toilet paper to Jesus. And glass cleaner for Jesus. And a happy birthday for Jesus. We're going to give gifts to Jesus. We're going to make Mary. Christ. Mass. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell near. Wait till you get to hell. You'll see torment. Ready? After three days and a half, the Spirit of life, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, from God entered into them. They stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them that saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. Acts chapter 1, as a prophet likened unto Jesus. And their enemies beheld them. And there was a great earthquake and the city fell. Okay. 
Malachi. Ooh, we're going to hear about tithing. Oh, Malachi. Chapter 4, verse 1. You see, in chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Say it, the Lord of hosts. Okay. Verse 2. See, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son, capital S, of righteousness arise with healing his wings and shall go forth and grow up as a calf in the stall. There is the second advent. He shall tread down the wicked, second advent. And there shall be ashes under the soles of the feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Second Advent. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Second Advent. Remember ye the law of Moses. One. My servant. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel. With the statutes and the judgment. Behold, I will send you Elijah, number two, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day. Elijah's coming back. And he's coming back with Moses. We just read that in Revelation 11. We just read that in Zechariah chapter 4. And we're not done. Your Baptist church doesn't know that. Your Baptist pastors don't know that. Your, your Baptist colleges don't know that. And it, they don't want to believe it, many. Malachi closes the book of the Old Testament canon with Jesus, Son of Righteousness, Moses, and Elijah, and it ends the book with a curse. And there's 400 years of silence. Don't give me the apocryphal books. That's garbage. Now we're not done. We're not done. We're not done, I said. Go to Matthew. Jesus, the King of Israel, of David, Matthew 17, verse 3. <clears throat> verse 2 is the transfiguration. Verse 3, And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking with him. Now, in order to be talking to them, you would think they would have to stand before the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. As Zechariah said, as we've read in Isaiah, uh, uh, Revelation. They're standing with the Lord. That's one. Mark, the servant of God. Mark. Nine. Verse five. Verse four. Verse two is the transfiguration. Verse four. And there appeared unto him Elias, which is Greek for Elijah, and Moses, and they talked. They were talking with Jesus. That means they're standing with Jesus. Okay. Now I forget what Luke represents. I gotta find it. Luke. Three. Three times. Luke 9. Verse 30. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You can't even find the birthday of Jesus in only but one gospel. And you find the transfiguration in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke 9.30 Behold, there talked with him, Jesus, two men which were 
Moses, and Elias. Now, you stay there for a moment. Stay right there. Let me begin Zechariah 4.1. And the angel that talked with me, I hit, no, scripture with scripture, don't mess with the words of the King James Bible. The angel that talked with me, 4.1, with me, came again and waked me as a man that wakened out of sleep. Now, you want to see something really great? Read verse 32 of chapter 9. Read it. That's why Zechariah 4 1 was put there. Because Peter, James, and John were asleep. When the two anointed ones, the two olive branches, showed up. They were asleep. And I'm not going to do it. But I guarantee somewhere along the line what we just read, I guarantee somewhere in the modern Bible's messed with it. Read verse 33. Moses dealt with a candlestick of gold. Read 